Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome to another Word of Encouragement, Your Health Tip and a Prayer with Dr. Deborah Williams, a.k.a. Dr. Debs. This morning, I want us to look at the topic of forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Does forgiveness justify the behavior of someone who has horribly wronged us? Is my forgiveness dependent on the offender's repentance? What if the one with whom I am upset does not deserve my forgiveness? I want us to ponder on those questions and look at it from a biblical perspective. Christ took the initiative in reconciling us to himself. It is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance, as we see in Romans 2 and verse 4. In Christ, we were reconciled to God while we were yet sinners. Our repentance and confession do not create reconciliation. Christ's death on the cross did. Our part is to accept what was done for us. Now, it is true that we cannot receive the blessings of forgiveness until we confess our sins. This does not mean that our confession creates forgiveness in God's heart. Not at all. Forgiveness was in his heart all the time. Confession instead enables us to receive his forgiveness. Confession is vitally important, not because it changes God's attitude toward us, but rather because it changes our attitude toward him. When we yield to the Holy Spirit's convicting power to repent and confess our sin, we are changed. We are the benefactors. Forgiveness also is critical for our own spiritual well-being. A failure to forgive someone who has wronged us, even if they do not deserve forgiveness in our own eyes, can hurt us more than it hurts them. If an individual has wronged you and the pain festers inside because you fail to forgive, you are allowing them to hurt you more and more and over and over. Such feelings and hurt often are the cause of divisions and tensions in families, in workplaces, in churches. Unresolved hurt between family members, church members, hurts the unity of the body of Christ Jesus. Forgiveness is releasing another from our condemnation because Christ has released us from his condemnation. It does not justify another person's behavior towards us. We can be reconciled to someone who has wronged us because Christ reconciled us to himself when we wronged him. We can forgive because we are forgiven. We can love because we are loved. Forgiveness is a choice. We can choose to forgive in spite of the other person's action or attitude. This is the true spirit of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to walk with me in the word of God and let us look at what we are commanded by the Lord, looking at uh, Mark 11, 22 to 27. It's one of my favorite scriptures when I'm working with persons who come to my office for a consultation and I see unresolved anger and unforgiveness. I have to deal with it before I can deal with their physical disease because unforgiveness is a spiritual disease and can block God from hearing your prayer. Now, I am a Christian physician and when I work with the sick and the suffering, I can't just work on the physical. I have to ensure that they're in alignment with God. So when I pray with them and they pray for themselves, the prayers can be answered by God. Now in Mark 11, 22, 27, the word of God says, And Christ answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, 
and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when he pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, if ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And they come again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, there come to him the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now, I remember reading this scripture about 10 years ago, when I was really going through some traumatic episodes in my life. And there was somebody who I had completely refused to forgive. I thought the person had hurt me so much, and I would never forgive the person. And so I was crying out to the Lord one day, asking the Lord to, to deal with a particular situation for me. And the Lord led me to Mark 11, 22 to 27. And the Lord said, I will take care of your problem when you release my son and forgive him. And from that day, I have never forgotten the lesson about forgiveness. Now, in Ephesians 4 and verse 26, the Bible says, Be he angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So even if we have a dispute with somebody, as Christians, as Christ's disciples, followers of Christ, before the day is done, we need to reconcile it and forgive. In 2 Corinthians 5, 20, 21, the word says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be he reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, him being Jesus Christ. We have to learn to model Jesus Jesus has no unforgiveness against anyone. He died for our sins. While we were yet um, enemies, our Lord died for us. Now, as disciples of Christ, we have been redeemed by his blood. We cannot walk around with unforgiveness against anyone at all. Now, we know sometimes it can be difficult. The situation can be very intense. But God can give us the power to forgive and to overcome. Now, forgiveness has been defined as the willingness to abandon one's right to resentment, condemnation and revenge towards an offender or group who acts unjustly. Forgiveness doesn't mean that there will be no consequences because sometimes the person who have wronged you, they will have to suffer consequences. But our responsibility as Christians is to forgive them and obey the Lord. Forgiveness doesn't mean letting the an abuser continue abusive patterns. Not at all. Forgiveness means instead that we turn our resentment and our desire for revenge over to God. If not, the anger, the bitterness, the resentment and the hatred will make whatever that person or persons did to us become even worse. Because it's damaging our heart. It's damaging our mind. It's giving some, it's oftentimes it's giving us hypertension. We're so angry. As Christians, we're called to forgive. No, every sin is indeed a sin against our Lord and Maker. So when somebody offends you, if you are a child of God, in effect, it is God who they're offending, right? No question. One of the keys in learning to forgive is to understand what we have been forgiven in Christ. We have all sinned, not just against other people, but against God. Now, we can claim total forgiveness for all our sins, not because we deserve it. We don't, but only because of God's grace towards us. Once we can grasp that sacred truth, once we can make this forgiveness our own once we can experience for ourselves the reality of god's forgiveness 
we can begin to let go and forgive others. We forgive not because others deserve it, but because it's what we have received from God and what we need ourselves. And besides, how often do we deserve forgiveness as well? We sin constantly, sometimes in thought, in words, or even in action. And there is our God forgiving us of our sins. As we go from day to day, it really is a process of letting go and letting God. In order to forgive, I must admit that I have been hurt. So that's the first place. You have to admit that the person hurt you. It's a, it's a reality. Your the emotions are there. This can be hard to do as we are sometimes more inclined to try to bury our feelings rather than work through them. Acknowledging an unchristian feeling of resentment and even anger before God sometimes can be very difficult, but it's okay. God is okay. We can come to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't like what this person did. Lord, I am hurt. Lord, help me to forgive. Jesus didn't wait for us to ask for forgiveness first. We do not have to wait for our, our offenders to ask for forgiveness. We can forgive others without having them accept our forgiveness. We can forgive them. We don't have to wait for them to say, I accept, I accept. Forgive and let go. Forgiveness, like love, begins with a choice rather than a feeling. We can make the choice to forgive, even if our emotions may not agree with this decision. When I And I remember several occasions where persons have wronged me. And my emotions were saying one thing. Don't forgive them. Don't speak to them. But the Holy Spirit said, you are now a child of God. And I opted to obey the, the word of God and say, okay, Lord, I yield. Not my will, but thy will be done. And I've walked away from many situations feeling free, having the burden lifted because I'm not walking in unforgiveness. God knows that in our own strength, this choice is impossible. But remember, with God, all things are possible. Mark 10 verse 27. This is why we are told to pray for those who have hurt us. In some cases, this person or persons may already have died. But we can still pray for the ability to forgive him or her and just let it go so we can be healed. No question, forgiveness isn't always easy. The pain and the damage done to us can be devastating, leaving us hurt, crippled, and broken. Healing will come if we allow it, but holding on to bitterness and anger and resentment will make healing much harder, if possible at all. The cross, the cross, my brothers and sisters, is the best example of what it costs God himself to forgive us. If the Lord can go through that for us, even though he knows that so many would nevertheless reject him, then we certainly can learn to forgive as well. When we forgive, we heal, we benefit from letting go of these negative emotions. Praise the Lord. Now, for our health tip, I want to look at the topic of constipation. I have so many patients that I have to work with on a day-to-day, week-by-week, month-by-month, year-by-year constipation. Dr. Williams, I I am not passing my stool. Dr. Williams, it's cramping me. Dr. Williams, I'm having headaches, fatigue, constipation. What are some of the causes of constipation? Well, nearly the entire human race is afflicted with constipation. And why is that? It is because of our bad eating habits and our bad um, lifestyle habits in many cases. Waste matter is left entirely too long in the body, in the colon. Wrong habit is the main cause, my brothers and sisters. Eating too much refined, devitalized foods that do not contain enough fiber or bulk, lack of muscular tone in the bowels, improper mastication which is chewing up chewing 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 up of your food 
a high meat diet because meat has no fiber in it too many varieties of food at one meal it causes confusion in the stomach it takes long for digestion and can also contribute to constipation eating food that is not, is not sorry eating food that is too concentrated using coffee or tea with high levels of caffeine and alcohol any type of alcohol can also contribute to constipation now irregular habits of attending to the call of nature you know you have some persons who once they leave their home they will never use a public bathroom anywhere and sometimes the urge comes mother nature is calling for them to go and evacuate past their stool and they will hold it and hold it and hold it that can lead to constipation and other diseases over time a sedentary lifestyle just sitting for the entire day and not moving around, especially these days with technology. People are just sedentary, sitting down, not moving. Lack of exercise are other contributing factors to this almost universal problem called constipation. Now, constip constipation, a disease called diverticulitis and cancer of the colon are all prevalent diseases all over the world mainly coming from the diet of highly refined foods, high use of sugar, too much meat, too much alcohol, and not enough fiber. Do you know that when we look at the African nations and the diet they eat, which is so high in bulk and um, cassava and, you know, just a lot of grown provision, they don't have a problem with constipation at all. Because their diets are loaded with fiber. They eat lots of vegetables and grown provision. Now, the life-giving properties that would aid digestion are removed from the foods that are eaten in the Western world because they are so processed, so highly processed, lacking nutrients in them, right? And thus, when you consume them, they taste good in your mouth. But we say they are bitter in the belly. Excessive use of drugs and patent medicine is a frequent cause of constipation, tumors, and other lifestyle diseases. Now, some of the symptoms of constipation, the coated tongue. So when you look at the tongue, the tongue looks almost white, coated tongue, right? Foul breath, backache, right? Um, headache, mental dullness depression insomnia loss of appetite and various pains these are some of the factors symptoms that will tell us that this person is suffering from chronic constipation now how do we treat with constipation well number one we want to regulate the diet we want to go on a whole food plant-based diet and start consuming more fruits vegetables peas and beans ground provision grains nuts lots of fiber rich food right there are herbs that we can use that will help with constipation for example there's one called cascara sagrada there's one called fennel seeds right you have the senna pad uh, you have wild cherry bark these are all wonderful herbs that will help you with constipation all you need to do is take one teaspoon of the herb to eight ounces of water Boil for about three minutes, let it steep for 10 minutes, strain and drink. And you're drinking these herbal teas while you are making the necessary changes to your diet. And you are also ensuring that you're exercising and drinking water throughout the day. Now, eat your food as dry as possible. When food is eaten dry and thoroughly um, saturated with your saliva, it is a wonderful help to lubricate your bowels. Chew, chew, chew. Chewing helps with the movement of the food and also helps to keep your bowels free. Drinking with meals is a very harmful habit. No liquid of any kind should be taken with your meals. Eat freely of fresh and stewed fruits like apples and figs and uh, um, peaches and oranges and bananas and blueberries, right? 
selecting the fruits that agree best with you because some persons can't eat certain type of fruits so you have to know which fruits work best for you but don't forget it is best not to eat fruits and vegetables at the same time why because your body processes and breaks down the food the fruits faster than it does the vegetables and when you eat fruits and vegetables at the same meal it causes the fruits to stay in your stomach too long and that can lead to fermentation and end up now with a problem with your colon get plenty of outdoor rest sorry get plenty of outdoor exercise and plenty of rest at night right when you are doing your exercise do your deep breathing exercises brisk walking right um you can do skipping and running and biking tennis or swimming practice deep breathing while walking in the morning before um getting lie on your back right pull your your knees up to your chest and just roll out of your breath your bed and breathe breathe in and out and in and out breathing in short rapid gasp right roll on your side your stomach and your left side and continue panting this exercise massages the the bowels right now the number of bowel movements per day varies greatly from person to person it may be normal for an individual to have one bowel movement per day while in others two or three times a day may be normal food should digest rapidly um, three times a day normally food should be eaten slowly while you are praying and thanking the lord for what he has given you right now if you're eating three meals per day you want to ideally be evacuating at least twice if not three times per day right if you are having three meals per day and you're evacuating only once a day then you are definitely suffering from constipation that will end up causing bad breath stomach problems and even acne now plenty of um, ensure that you're having your baths right you can also massage your abdomen you can warm some castor oil and massage your abdomen if you are suffering from constipation. It's an excellent aid for overcoming constipation. When patients come to me, one of the remedies I give them for constipation is to get a rag and just pour some warm castor oil on that rag and cover the tummy with it. And then cover that with a plastic and cover the plastic with another towel. And just let the warm castor oil just penetrate through the skin tissue and it helps over time as a lubricant with the whole issue with the compaction and the constipation be happy at mealtime have a happy mental attitude that will also help because the body and the brain works together synergistically if you are upset and anger and stressed out that can also lead to constipation now the following is an excellent formula for a laxative what you can do you can get a herb called a, a mandrake one called buckthorn one the fennel seeds right and you can combine one teaspoon each and then you will put them in a pot with eight ounces of water boil it and make a lovely cup of tea and drink that you know just before you go to bed no later than say seven o'clock don't drink it too late in the night and over time with your dietary changes you will see a good relief from the constipation now aloe vera is also an excellent herb for constipation i normally recommend that you take about four ounces of the aloe vera gel and you just blend that in some water or even coconut water and drink that over a seven day period twice a day four ounces in the coconut water maybe four ounces of coconut water or water twice a day for seven days and that will tremendously help you also it is a real body cleanser there are many other herbs that we can use but i, I don't want to go into details with those today if you are having the issue with constipation you can try these recommendations and i promise you over time you will see relief coming remember please plenty of fluids are imperative in the treatment of constipation but when i say fluids i'm talking about water right or you can drink um, coconut water or you can drink vegetable juices 
I normally recommend that you eat your fruits rather than drink too much fruit juices because of the high uh, glucose level, which can also impact your blood sugar level. And if you're diabetic, that would be a serious problem. So if you follow these simple uh, recommendations, I promise you that you will not have an issue with constipation. Let us thank the Lord for giving us all the wonderful ways of staying in good health and prosper, even as our souls shall prosper. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you once more for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and your love. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to take care of our body temples. We're not left here on our own to decide what to do. You have given us your Holy Spirit, Father. You have given us the herbs and the natural foods and the water, and you have taught us the way to good health. We thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ, your Son, our High Priest, our Surety, our Big Brother, our Kinsman Redeemer. He is in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, interceding on our behalf, day by day, moment by moment. He is now the head of the human race. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being on our side, for guiding us through the pathway of life. This, this morning, Father, we want to thank you for reminding us about the importance of forgiveness. Even as you have forgiven us our sins, we must forgive others. And as much as we want to be forgiven, we must learn to forgive. So thank you, Lord, for that reminder today. There are many of your people suffering from constipation. But Lord, even as we have shared these natural remedies, I pray that someone listening today will learn turn and be relieved from this disease called constipation which can lead to colon cancer as i've seen over and over again in my practice thank you lord for your love and your care towards the children let your blessing be multiplied upon us and let your name be glorified magnified and exalted is our prayer with thanksgiving in jesus name amen okay my friends god bless you from dr deb stay in good health until we speak again